traveling for three weeks straight, so this reasonably sound is going to be a little bit short and recorded as one friend's mobile email signature reads, whilst afoot. This month I'm going to three conventions, or really two conventions and a conference. And there's this constant presence I've noticed after the first two, and one I'm shocked to not have perceived before. Having spent whole days in these centers, some of them literally miles long, and all of them associated in some way with a major hotel chain, I've recently realized just how often my travels, interactions, and meals were underscored by that palatable nonsense of music, that standard unit of very purposefully organized sound, Muzak. It makes sense, given what happens in the convention center, or really in the convention center's attached hotel and transitional zones. Lots of walking to and fro, rooms, eons apart, infinite horizons of brightly colored carpet framed by white walls or concrete, cream or gray, maybe dark blue, or if you're really lucky, wood paneling with floral wallpaper. The ceilings are high, the doors are wide, my Fitbit's daily step count approaching infinity. In the convention center, we become itinerant, settling only long enough to catch a panel, charge a phone, or destroy a slice of pizza or Baja fresh burrito bowl. And in the moments moving from A to B, the moments in transition, and probably especially the moments spent waiting before transition, I've noticed that there tends to be music. It's never in the halls, it's not in the expo floor. Sometimes it's in the hallways, it might be in the food courts, but it's always in the lobbies. I sat for a few hours before leaving my last con watching people walk by one of these lobbies. I set up camp in a particularly not interesting part of the center. No open rooms, no attractions. Not near a functioning or useful part of the center or convention, just a spot past which any given con-goer might walk on their way somewhere else. The carpet was orange, the chairs a kind of dull amber, the muzak present enough, and the steps of the con-goers usually in sync with it. Not always, but mostly. Muzak, I don't know, it, it entrains us. It lets us know we're not really supposed to be where it is. We're supposed to be in whatever that place is only as a means to an end. Music lets us know we're supposed to be somewhere else. That's why it's not played in panel rooms or the expo floor and why maybe it's played at the food court. Stay and eat, please, you should be comfortable, but also eat and leave as soon as possible a thousand other people need to eat. Music carries us along to other places, making every place it is a place of transition. Muzak wants those areas to become like itself. Effortless. Invisible. Just pleasant enough to disappear completely. Like a bath, the exact temperature of the surface of your skin. Muzak destroys time. It is constant and consistent and tests the edges of our patience, both somehow for blandness and repetition. At what point does music become background noise and not background music? How many times do we ask, geez, how long is this song before it changes? Music which changes too often doth protest too much. Notice me, notice me. Muzak which lingers, it makes too much eye contact. Did you notice me yet? Did you notice me yet? But Muzak also creates time. Or maybe it makes up time. The crowds walking past me settle into a Muzak friendly rhythm which ushers them to their destination, such maybe that they don't realize how long their walk could or should take. 
Muzak creates time in that it counts time and rushes us along through it. Keeps us the perfect amount of company, but not in the process. Muzak wants to motivate us slyly to let us know this space is not empty while not crowding us too much. It wants us to feel pleasant, but not cloyed. Muzak goes in elevators to remind us of the space outside the small metal box, and it fills the awkward, empty silence inherent to the forced proximity of strangers. Muzak goes in convention centers to remind us that this place isn't so big, and oh, it's, it's kind of pleasant anyway. It fills the massive, echoey tundra of wooden tables and circles of chairs placed by some designer in an obvious attempt to predict the presence of breakout sessions. My name is Mike Rugnetta, and this podcast has been Reasonably Sound. You can find Reasonably Sound on Instagram and Twitter at Reasonably S-N-D, and you can find me, Mike Rugnetta, on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram.